Hello and welcome as we go live to explore German music and culture. Today we are joined by Uwe Jacobs from the German broadcasting team on 3ZZZ and Polaron's director, Eva Hussein. Don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook page where we upload videos weekly. Over to you, Eva. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and uh, welcome. Good morning to you, Uwe. Thank you, Eva and Stephanie. Thanks for having me. We're very um, happy to have you, in fact, um, because there's so many things we can talk about when it comes to German community in Australia. Uh, but what I would like to begin with is um, if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I know a few things. For example, we came to Australia in the same year in 1986. But tell us um, a bit about your background, please, Uwe. Sure. Um... So I came in 86 as a young and upcoming 24 year old. It also means that I'm in the advanced stages of my life. <laughs> oh, I don't know um, about that. <laughs> yeah, look, simply the idea was I had substantial parts of my family already in Australia, came here twice for holiday and um, liked the place. And the idea was to check it out for two years, see, more of the world, live in an English speaking country. And if it would work, it was okay. Everything was good. If it didn't work, I was going to come back to Germany, um, having lived in an English speaking country for two years. I call that a win win. Well, right. 25 years later, I'm still here, still loving the place, and uh, it's a great place to live for sure. It is indeed. And um, Uwe, professionally, um, you are um, involved in all kinds of adventures and ventures, um, but you also um, are a volunteer, I guess is the best way to describe you, with Radio 3 Z, And it's a radio station that's a community radio station with many years of um, uh, tradition of supporting uh, local communities. Yes. Uh, so could you could you just tell us a bit more about what you do professionally, but also you know um, the radio involvement, please? Sure. So let's cover the radio first. Three Triple Z is the largest community radio station in Australia. We have over fifty groups and language um, languages that are broadcasting typically from 6 a.m. till about 9 p.m. every day, before and after uh, radio uh, BBC is switched on. Now, every hour, typically a different language group or uh, group of interest broadcasts on their subject. So for example, uh, the German group is uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. and Wednesdays from 10 to 11 a.m. We have uh, about 15 broadcasters, so we're very lucky. We have uh, a good group of people together with very diverse interests and hence very diverse um, radio shows. So we have, for example, uh, one gentleman that dedicates his show uh, to ska, which is a form of reggae. Um, we have um, three ladies that call themselves Wellenreiter, surfer. Uh, they have um, current music, chats, interviews. Uh, we have um, had a couple that were just about exclusively doing opera. So um, there's really a broad range. And I see that as a great example of the diversity of cultures and uh, people in Australia. Now, as to myself, I came to Australia as a industry Kaufman, a commercial officer. There's no real translation uh, of this uh, profession in the English language. Um, started fresh again in a software administration role, worked my way up, um, joined a European company where I did big industrial projects, so power stations, infrastructure projects like trains and trams, I spent four years in uh, 
working on the Melbourne train and tram tender back in 98, I think it was. Um, won that contract, executed it to first delivery of train and tram. All of that is on the commercial, administrative, legal, HR side of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've done many, many different things and variety is the spice of life. Sounds, sounds amazing. And uh, as you said, very diverse. And look, I, I think radio connects in many different ways um, in that, uh, you know, you can listen to it in the background. Uh, you can listen to it in the car, um, you know, whilst working, whilst doing other things. Uh, but who listens to Uber? Like, who, who are your listeners? <laughs> I call them the middle-aged. Ah, okay. Um, quer durch die Bank uh, means um, a variety of things being in the in the medium of the spectrum. So um, typically they are the 45 year olds and above. Um, I play exclusively German music. There's enough English music around in Australia for sure. And um, broadcasting for the demographic that we do, um, we generally keep it to German music. We also uh, record our sessions and uh, lodge them as a podcast uh, on SoundCloud. So I'll give ourselves a plug, Radio 3 Triple Z, uh, German radio, or on Facebook, 3 Triple Z German program. Um, so we, we endeavor to overcome the challenge that most clubs and and organizations have that are voluntary where the membership tends to be fairly old in the advanced stages of their life which is um, not surprising when i look at myself i uh, listen to podcasts um, there are lots of streaming services where i can get music on demand exactly according to my liking so I think it's important as a community radio station to um, be versatile and be up to date with technology. Hence, we upload the um, programs in various playlists to SoundCloud. Right. And not that I would consider uh, us um, old, Uwe, uh, but I think when we looked up um, the German community, average age is something like 61. And that is because um, of the different migration waves um, and, and people just getting older, basically. So they would be um, very interested and very progressive. I think it's sometimes assumed that older people don't understand technology. There's nothing further Ooh. from the truth in my mind. And it sounds like the radio is very progressive and uh, understands that people want to be given information um, in all different formats, in all different ways. Uh, and certainly what you do is, um, you know, especially I think during COVID, um, is help people find their space um, in, in, in the hour that you broadcast. Is that right? Yes. Um, let's cover up on age, first of all. Uh, <laughs> age is a number in the passport. That's my philosophy. There are a lot of uh, people in their 80s uh, that are very, very active. I cite my mom. She's 87. She Skypes, Zooms, and uh, WhatsApps around the world. Um, now, admittingly, we have to go uh, about once a month and clean the computer up again and that sort of thing. But that's that's the price that I'm happy to pay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look... You are as old as, as you are in your state of mind, is, is my, my view on that. Um, but the, the, the listenership is fairly uh, old. I, I would agree with that. And, of course, we adjust the program to that. On the other hand, we also offer for the younger people um, a program. I mentioned that one of the broadcasters is specifically broadcasting on reggae, on the early right. forms of reggae. Um, and he has got a great listenership. Now, his podcast or his SoundCloud profile is one of the most hit on, um, on SoundCloud. Now, that is probably also a function of the um, special topic that he does. 
Um, but yes, we um, on functions where we um, present ourselves. So the Christmas markets, our annual general meeting where the community gets together. Um, it is amazing how how often people say, "Oh, look, uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard you. Listen, I've heard you." You know, scariest thing ever is uh, I, I was in a in a line for for some shopping, and I was talking to my wife, and somebody behind me pops up and says, "You must be over." And I went, "Do I know you?" No, he goes, but I hear you on the radio. <laughs> oh, your voice, right. So, so secretly you are a celebrity, Uwe, is that right? Well, um, I would rather say it's the accent that gives it away. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, but, you know, ha having a good uh, voice for radio is, is important, of course. And you, you mentioned um, something that's really interesting that's happening more and more is that people are looking for their own niche, for their own um, space. And, you know, you don't have to listen to everything, but you can find things that resonate with you. And I think that's what the radio does. Yes. Um, about German um, community in Australia, we know very little of it because, you know, it's, I think it's fair to say that it's a community that's fairly integrated. Apart from a couple of pockets, you know, I think uh, before we came on, May, uh, you mentioned uh, Adelaide and Barossa Valley. Um, you know, the community lives everywhere and um, uh, we, we can look at some numbers because I think we just looked them up. Um, so tell us more about the German community in Australia. Who are they? Well, I believe that there's uh, about 26,000 German born, German born right. um, people living in Melbourne or in Victoria, and I should say. No, in Melbourne. In Melbourne, it is. In Melbourne. In Melbourne, yes. The average year of age is 61. Um, and interesting, interesting fun fact 20% of um, the German migration came to Melbourne. So quite a high uh, number, yeah. considering everything. Um, one, one of the reasons from my point of view um, that you don't hear so much about the German community is because, again, this is just my point of view, we integrate, we right. assimilate. We do that, um, when I look at myself, my wife and I, when we are outside, now, having been here for 35 years, we only speak English. And I reflect on my time back in Germany when migrants there were talking their mother tongue. And I, as a German, couldn't understand what they were saying. You know, there's always a bit of a lingering doubt. Are they talking about me? That sort of thing. So I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think it is very, very important having chosen to live here. And it is a choice. Um, to integrate, to when in Rome, do us the Romans. Right, right. On the other hand, uh, we, we, you, you do provide a German language program. So there's, um, there's something to be said about being bilingual and there's something to be said to preserving the language. And, and I think language connects, um, of course, and uh, it progresses, it changes. It's not something that's static. Uh, but when we look at the numbers of the uh, German community, the German diaspora, it's very difficult to estimate how many there are. And that is because of how the data is collected. So we, we think uh, that there's probably around 200,000 German heritage people. And, uh, you know, the community is generally, as you said, um, you know, integrated and quiet achievers, I guess, um, it would be the way to put it. But there's also quite a strong presence in the business um, sense. Is that, is that right? Absolutely. There is a, a great connection of people um, through the Chamber of Commerce, the Consul General of uh, Melbourne or of Victoria, I should say, is uh, holding uh, regular meetings in, when we can, face-to-face -face meetings um, where a great exchange of information also on the cultural level is happening. We have a number of uh, clubs. Um, one club that comes to mind are, of course, the German clubs, but also the Yara Valley um, club where monthly dances happen. So when I say that I think integration is important, 
Absolutely, but it is also important to maintain your roots, to maintain your culture um, without being indoctrinated about it. Um, for yeah. example, one of my hobbies is small goods. Oh yes, tell us about the sausages. That <laughs> of course I make German sausages, but I also make Italian salami. Um, okay. And uh, I've just uh, taken advantage of a great uh, special. So this weekend I will start making Schwarzwälder uh, Schinken, so Black Forest ham. Oh wow! So do you make it at home in your in your? Do, do you have like a smoking uh, facility, or what, what happens? How do you make it? Uh, yes, it's it's all very rudimentary, and that's why I can only do it in winter, in the Melbourne winter, mm -hmm. um, because of course the meat is is hanging in my garage uh -huh. for four weeks to dry. And uh, that means we need to have fairly cold temperatures. And at the current point in time, uh, being winter in Melbourne, that's easily achieved. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, uh, first the um, meat goes into a brine, then it uh, gets dried, then it gets uh, smoked five times for extremely long periods, 12 hours each time. Oh, wow. And that is the blackening effect that the black forest ham um, is known for. So again, a fun fact, the, the name black forest is not only uh, related to the area where it's produced, but also uh, related to the black outside due to the extremely long smoking and lots of smoking times, um, the outside of the ham is traditionally black. Okay, and it's a regional delicacy, I guess. Um, Absolutely. Right, right. And um, speaking of food, you, you did mention a couple of um, German clubs and, and of course they serve lunches, I think, and uh, they serve as a community hub uh, there's one around the corner from, from our office and from where I live. Um, and I know that it's well attended, uh, you know, when, when there's no COVID. Um, so what I was going to ask you, though, is about your professional life, because I know that um, apart from your involvement in various community uh, initiatives, you also work as a um, sort of advisor to investors. Is that, is that right? Yes, yes. I'm an um, investment advisor. Um, you know, 20 years ago, when I was at the height of my corporate job, I figured out that there needed to be a secondary income, secondary asset base, relying on one source um, is not good in my view. Any investment advisor, any um, financial planner will tell you that. And so we started property investments just for ourselves and very quickly figured out that in general terms, the companies operating in that space work for themselves, not for the benefit of the uh, client. Right. Now, that was something that got under my wig. At the same time, we also got into a group of people that were very freely sharing their knowledge. Um, and we sort of became the bias advocate for that group. Now, continuing on 20 years, um, our seven step success system really provides for um, training and opportunity. Um, we mitigate risk. And we provide opportunity to get into real estate according to a very simple formula. And that formula is, if it ain't good enough for ourselves, it ain't good enough for anybody in our team. I love it. I love it. I think it's such a, um, you know, kind of organic and honest way of uh, uh, approaching business. Um, and would you, would you say that it's... Um, you know, and I don't want us to get into stereotypes with it, but would you say that it's a typically German value to be direct, uh, honest, and uh, and very pragmatic? The short answer is yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, um, I often say to clients of mine, especially the Australian clients, and we have got a very diverse community of clients, which is interesting in itself, but... 
I often say to them that I can be very direct. Uh, I don't mean to be arrogant or appearing to be arrogant, but um, the good point about being direct is you always know what I'm up to and what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd rather know where you are at, Eva, and know whether I have overshot the mark or whether we are becoming good friends than beating around the bush. Right. Uh, life is too short to muck around with um, pleasantries that, that are going beyond normal doctrine. I'm not saying to headbutt people. No. But I'm saying um, that some people just beat around the bush for too long. Yes, we got to exchange some pleasantries. And I love that about Australia. The uh, managing director talks to the uh, cleaner. Very egalitarian, yeah. That would not happen in Germany. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things that I love about Australia. So there is a, a nice balance between um, politeness, between, on the other hand, depth of conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, you can't do that with everybody. And um, I'm not saying that everybody likes my, my way and my approach. And, and that's a good thing. Uva, this reminds me of um, a thing that I found extremely strange when I came to Australia. I don't know if you, if you do too. But uh, people asking each other how they are and not really wanting to know. Uh, I found that bizarre uh, because in my head, you know, when I translate, um, well, I've stopped now, by the way, because I've learned that people don't really care about how I am. You know, how I is like, oh, they, they want to know. So I want to tell them. But um, so this is one of the sort of cultural clashes um, that many Europeans will encounter in Australia where it's just a figure of speech. It's, it's just a nice thing to say, but without that genuine sort of uh, interest of, of uh, how you are. Uh, and maybe that's not fair, but like, um, you, you know, it's just thrown around um, the room that you enter um, and, um, you know, people move on very quickly from that question. They don't want to know that you have a sore leg or your cat's sick or whatever. Um, so it's a bit like that, right, where uh, where we do still navigate it. Certainly me, even though I've lived here for such a long time through those um, cultural uh, differences, I guess, um, and as integrated as I feel from time to time, there are still kind of clashes and, and misunderstandings on a cultural level, I think. Absolutely. I mean, you're talking to a guy that went to a barbecue and got told, bring a plate. So what did I do? I brought a plate. I literally brought a plate. Of course, much to the laughter of everybody else. Right. You, you learn things when you migrate into a different country. Right. Every country has got its peculiarities and... Um, Again, that's that's a spice of life, isn't it? Yeah. Now, yes, uh, people say automatically, how are you? And nobody wants to really know, but isn't it a nice way of opening a conversation? And connecting. Um, yeah. You know, at the very least, we've had the uh, pleasantry of addressing each other, mm -hmm. saying hello. Um, and what happens from there is, is very much up to the situation, to the people. Um, yes, communication is different in Australia, um, just as is people management. And I dare say that is um, pretty much the same in every country. Every country has got its own language, culture, architecture, and the way that this society works and handles each other. And I think that's the, that's the beauty of, um, you know, there are lots of things that aren't great when you first immigrate, as, you, as you've mentioned, maybe, no, you haven't mentioned, but I'm going to mention it, that it, the initial culture shock is there, right? Uh, at the very beginning. But I think, um, you know, after that, certainly Australia is a very welcoming country. That's what I've, I've experienced. And I, I love this place as much as you do. Uwe, we have about five minutes for questions, but let me start by asking you what's in your background, because I'm seeing bits of sea and um, a building site. Am, am I right? 
Well, this is actually a house that we have built an investment house in Tasmania. Uh -huh. I'm running a blue screen, a green screen, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, look, I, I love finding uh, real estate with an edge. Uh, this is in Hobart, a stunning city, stunning city and a great investment place. So um, yes, it's a, it's a green screen. Uh -huh. So it's a bit off the beat and track uh, and we can see a beautiful view from there. Stephanie, I'm going to hand over to you for some questions because I can see that there are quite a few. Yeah, thank you, Eva, and thank you, Uwe. We've got a few questions. So I was wondering if you could give us some music recommendations for any German listeners listening in today. Oh, absolutely. I have a complete playlist of uh, just um, German current songs. I, I, I quite like the uh, some current songs. So uh, Liza is, uh, is um, a song that I quite like. Um, there are a number of things. I also quite enjoy Reinhard May. Um, Über den Wolken is, is still one of my absolute um, favorites. If we go more into the current music scene, um, Contextually, I love Tim Bensko, Nur noch kurz die Welt retten. So um, I can go on for hours. On Quite this. a range. Um, Uwe, you knew this was coming, right? I'm going to ask you about Eurovision. Do you, are you for or are you against? Um, I am for Eurovision. I just don't know what Australia is doing there. Last what? time I counted uh, and looked at it, Australia was quite a bit away from Europe. Yeah, but we, I don't think we can host, so we can participate, but we can't bring Eurovision to Australia. But Germany won, I, I want to I wanna say 2018, there was a beautiful song by a German um, uh, woman whose name I cannot remember, but I know that um, uh, Germany brings in a very good act every year. Poland's hopeless, let me tell you. Uh, this year they didn't qualify to anything. Um, we try, we try very, very hard, but the, the best we've ever been is second. But Germany uh, hosted Eurovision quite a few times, right? I have to admit, Eva, I'm not a specialist on Eurovision. So uh, rather than saying the wrong thing and making myself look silly, um, I, I openly declare that I don't know much about it. <laughs> we might have to invite you uh, next time and we'll brush up on our knowledge um, of, of Eurovision. But it's, it's, a, it's a very strange uh, event that's worth watching just, just for the fun of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I am amazed at, again, the variety. It, I think it started off as a bit of an old folks uh, broadcast and the music was very much traditional music. Um, but when I have a glimpse at it these days, there is punk, there is all sorts of music trends, and of course also some traditional music um, pieces. Um, I find it interesting how diverse the Eurovision is these days. Yeah, and I think a couple of major stars like Celine Dion and uh, I think Abba um, came out of that you know, um, cohort there. Stephanie, we have time for one quick question and then we're done. Easy. So we are in lockdown at the moment. I was wondering how that's affecting the radio show and if you're still able to host the show at the moment. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Yes, uh, we are very, very lucky. We... Um, produce the radio shows from our homes oh, okay. and then upload them to the studio. Um, I'm a user and abuser of technology. So I uh, ran some training sessions with the German group on that. And it's, it's working um, just about flawlessly now, um, which has also given us a, a great opportunity to get up to speed with technology and Another fun fact, one of our broadcasters, uh, Rudy's son is in Switzerland. So Rudy um, selects the music, his son in Switzerland puts it together, sends him the broadcast, and we then upload it into the station from Melbourne. International work. Yeah, international collaboration, that's for sure. It sounds amazing. We've, we have put... Um... 
where people can find you uh, on our uh, Facebook page. But Thank essentially, it, it's it's once a week, and um, you can not just listen to it live, but you can also find it as a podcast. So we'll put all that information um, on our Facebook page, and we're very grateful to you. That I've learned a lot. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and your uh, your personality, which is kind of larger than life. And I, I wish you all the best with the program. I think radio plays such an important part in, in connecting people. Um, and I'm uh, I'm amazed that you've kept it up for, for quite some years now. Um, so all, all the best. And thank you again for coming along to our little show today. Thank you, Eva. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay. And we talk Eurovision next time, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.